Making schedules is always a challenge for homeschoolers, but the secret sauce to really making it work is the topic of our conversation today. Homeschooling mom Arlena Brown is here to talk about making a schedule and being intentional. Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Maladnik, and I'm here today with Lena Brown. Uh, we're going to be talking about making a schedule and being intentional, but first let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Lena Brown is a traditional Roman Catholic wife of 13 years to her husband Robert and mother of four children ranging from 2 to 12 years old, three of whom are homeschooled. Lena has a BS in psychology with an emphasis in infant and toddler development. She has worked with parents and children from infancy through 8th grade and has been a mentor and teacher for a teen mom program. Lena and her family have shared their homeschooling experiences in media outlets such as the Associated Press, Fox News Live, and the podcast From the Kitchen Table with Rachel Campos Duffy and Sean Duffy. You can connect with Lena Brown on Facebook, and I'll have that in our show notes. Lena, it's so good to have you back. Thanks so much for making the time today. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to be here. Yeah, no, it's really fun to connect with you because you're in Texas and I'm in New York and we're kind of in different cultures and different paces of life, but we share that family circus, the complexities of making it all yeah. work. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, so just step us into a little bit of why is this secret sauce of being intentional so important in running your home school well? It's so important because our kiddos are with us the majority of the time, and we want to make sure that they're developing properly, being around children that are their age group or maybe a little younger, a little older. I kind of like that approach. And so we have to be intentional about what we do during the day. Can we fit in some time for social socialization? Can we fit in time for, you know, those extracurricular activities that they want to do? Yeah, yeah. And so we're looking at all the moving moving pieces with the end in mind, right? We're we're we have a goal here. You know, um the smaller goals under heaven itself, but we also have to get certain things done. P give us a peek into the world of homeschooling that's not being intentional about its scheduling. What does that look like? So that could look like for some families we don't have a schedule. You know, we just kind of do homeschool anytime for some families that works, but for people like me that are kind of a, you know, a hot mess, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to have things a little bit more planned out. So uh, we use a schedule. We start school at 930. We end at 130 and we allow for time to, you know, meet up with other families. I'm hoping to expand that time to include daily mass at some point, even if we go a couple days a week. Um, but I think that when you're not intentional, there's moments that are, um, you know, kind of, I'm sorry, I have to pause right there. Sure. Okay. When we're not being intentional, we're not able to maximize the learning opportunities that we can have with our children. Mm, yeah. Can you give me an example of that? Like um, what is sort of not being intentional about a learning opportunity sort of look or feel like? What, what are we likely to feel like afterwards? That sort of thing. Like what is that like versus, okay, we're being intentional? Sure. I think, you know, one example could be in the kitchen. I know sometimes it's hectic around dinner time. We have to do so many things or so many moving parts. Like you say, we have to go to the store. We have to do this and we have to do that. But sometimes we can slow down and say, how can we make this a learning opportunity? Can we make a list and have the kiddos partner up and go find some items? Can they help us measure some things? Can they even help cook at a certain age? 
Yeah. So what you're saying is that that idea of being intentional is kind of a key that unlocks almost any part of our day that's important and invites learning if we're Absolutely. noticing, if we're alert. Yeah. Oh, that's Absolutely. I like the sound of that. Yeah. So <laughs> what are some of the typical challenges that make it hard for homeschoolers to stay with their intentions? Sometimes it can be motivation. You know, everyone has those slumps every once in a while where you're just kind of like, do we have to do school today? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that that can look different within the time frame that you want to do schooling. Or sometimes, you know, you have some life things that are going on, some circumstances that change. And so school is going to look different for a little while. Mm. You know, it, it's not going to always look the same. Okay, so uh, if you're a little distracted or multitasking, just lean in for a moment, because this is really a key, I think, to happy homeschooling. And that is life throws us a lot of curveballs. I was just kind of laughing about this with Lena before we hit record, because I'm a hot mess today. And I was late <laughs> to our session. But sometimes we, you know, God is showing us a new thing in our discombobulation, there's some other new lesson or some opportunity to be agile, to let our kids see that, to see us pivot and accommodate yes. whatever the new thing is. Um, and yet, starting with that intentional schedule can give us so much. And if you could, Lena, say a little bit about what are the steps to getting to the point of an intentional schedule? Does it start in prayer? Does it start with laying out the curricula? What are your steps to building a schedule and kind of weaving in that intentionality? Sure. The first step I really think is discernment. You have to include prayer. What do you want your day to look like? What do you visualize? Also, I think it's important to talk to your spouse, see what they think as well, because bouncing ideas off of each other can really open your eyes to some things. I also got input from my kids. What time do you guys want to start? What time do you think you can start? You know, they want to do little things in the morning. They're getting ready for their day. I didn't want to imitate a normal school day. So that was important for us. And also my kids, um, a few of them have some special needs that they need to take care of, you know, that's including medication or uh, my son has narcolepsy, so he has to take naps throughout the day. So those are the first steps that I took. And then also um, I knew I couldn't wing it. I knew I couldn't wing it. So um, I had to realize that I needed help making a schedule. And so gracefully, and thankfully, I was able to reach out to someone that's a veteran homeschool mom, and she was such a blessing. She helped me make a schedule. And I mean, just the way she did it was just just so smart. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And so I imitated that. And it's, yeah. it's been great. Oh, I want to hear some of the nuts and bolts of that when we come back for our, from our sponsor break. But I'm sure. so excited to hear that you drew this out of a relational place, a place with another homeschool mom. We learn so much from each other. All right, everybody, we'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Walter Crawford. And I'm Maureen Whitman. We are the co-founders of homeschoolconnections.com and proud sponsors of the Homeschooling Saints podcast which is here to help you homeschool more joyfully, more easily, and more effectively. We want to thank you for listening. And we invite you to check out our courses at homeschoolconnections.com. And now back to our program. All right, we're back. So Lena, just recall for us, what was it about the way she did it that lit you up and became yeah. a framework for you? So the way she did it was kind of a block schedule. So some days she did certain subjects, some days she did other subjects, but then she did the core subjects every day. So we're making sure we do math every day. We're making sure we do English. And sometimes people say, you know, how, how much are you supposed to do? How much time should we dedicate to each subject? So she broke it down for me. She said, hey, we're going to do 30 minutes of English. We're going to do 30 minutes of math. Maybe we'll do 20 minutes of science. And that has been so helpful. I follow a lesson plan 
But for me, I needed to see the time frames. How much time should we dedicate? And I think it helps keep my kids motivated as well. I have a timer and they're able to see when are we going to be done with this? You know, (laughs) sometimes the subjects aren't their favorite and that's okay. They can see an an end goal in mind. Yeah. I love what you just said too. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, seeing the end goal in mind. Sorry, I talked over you there for a second. But yeah, knowing when we're going to be done, that's such a gift to everybody. Like there's a framework. I'm just going to relate this to myself. I hired a personal trainer. I meet with her for a half hour once a week. That's all I can scrape together. But knowing I'm going to meet with her and that she has a little menu of things I'm to do until the next time I see her, and I know exactly how much time it takes, I'm telling you, it has set me free. I used to beat myself up so much thinking I never did enough and I was always doing everything wrong. Like in my own head, I was fighting this battle. When you finally have a simple timed framework, it sets you free. It sure does. They've been able to excel. And I just think it's so wonderful. Another thing that I have implemented that has been a godsend from another fellow mom that I actually follow on TikTok. She's awesome. Um, She says that you need to prioritize instead of multitasking, right? So you often think of your day, you say, how are you going to get it all done? How am I going to schedule time for this, schedule time for that? Well, some things you need to delegate. Some things you need to realize, you know what, it's actually not important right now. So the whole idea is, it's a matrix. It's called um, Eisenhower Decision Matrix. And so it breaks it down into four categories. You have what's important and urgent. That's um, things you have to do immediately. That's um, emergencies, you know, things like that. Things that are important and not urgent. Those are things that you can plan ahead. That's long-term goals, you know, a long-term project. Um, You also have things that are not important and urgent. That could be something that's... um, you know, an email I need to get back to. That's something that you can delegate to someone else. And then lastly, you have something that's not important and something that's not urgent. That's scrolling through social media. You know, that's just um, junk emails, you know, things you don't really need. So when you prioritize your life like that, it opens up so much more possibilities. Oh, I love that. Stephen Covey does something similar, and I've heard of the Eisenhower Matrix. This is so good. These are simple tools for visualizing. And I love the way you gave an example of each, because sometimes it's hard for us to pinpoint what's urgent but not important, and what's important and urgent. That's like if, you know, typical, you know, most moms, it might be a sick kid at school. They have to actually leave work to do that. You're not going to make them wait three hours to come home. But mm-hmm. but for us as homeschoolers, it might be a little more nebulous. And so having time to reflect on it and sort of think about the kinds of things that fall into those categories, now your brain is ready to recognize them. It's almost like if you lose your kid in a crowd for a few minutes and they're wearing a bright red sweatshirt, you see spots of red everywhere you look because your brain is aware of that color, right? Same thing with this matrix. Once you start to step into it and work with it and ponder it, now you can recognize how to prioritize those different things. So so the steps then for you, uh, it sounds like core subjects every day and there's social time, there's other kinds of educational opportunities, there are your children's special needs and things like that. What yes. else goes into being an intentional scheduler? I would think that another important thing is making a lunch menu. Um, <laughs> that is cool. This, I never thought about doing that. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I have a dinner menu. I'm going to do this and do that. Dinner is, you know, it's okay for me, but lunch is the kicker. Lunch for me is something that I'm like, oh my goodness, what are we going to eat? It's lunchtime already, you know? (laughs) So I've made a lunch menu. My kids are old enough where they can kind of make their own lunches now. So I say, hey, we have this for Monday. You can pick from these things. We have this for Tuesday. You can choose from these items. Snacks are on there as well. I know moms, hey, that's a four-letter word for you sometimes. 
can we have a snack? Yes, you can. It's on the schedule. Mm. It's uh, it's on the menu. Wow. I mm. love that. I really do. Because so many of these things can just be irritations that drain us and take us away from focusing on other things. But when it's set out and the kids are learning from you how to be on a schedule, how to relate to it, and how simplifying that is. Yes. It can be as simple or as hard as you want it to be. And why not make it simple? Mm -hmm. You know, kids like to know what to expect. And I know sometimes when you have multiple children, especially, they're asking you from all angles, what are we going to eat? Can we have a snack? Is it time for this? Is it time for that? (laughs) You could say, you can go over there, go read. (laughs) <laughs> and then that, el- that eliminates that pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know what? I think when they have that little bit of independence, even young, as soon as they're readers, as soon as they can follow instructions like that, I think that makes them feel better about themselves, a little more confident that they that they know that they can be self-starters within a framework. Yes, exactly. And even for our little kiddos, we can make pictures. You know, we're having apples for snack. You can have a picture of a little apple. I think they would love that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one mom would use the old fashioned ice cube trays and she would cut up like raw broccoli and carrots and things like that in those. Perfect. And that was the snack tray her two kids could pull from there. So whatever <laughs> it was she wanted them to eat for snacks, you just put in those little trays. Perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. I've made a cheese board Uh, the security board for the first day of school and they absolutely loved it and we just had it there it was wonderful we had um some chocolate covered pretzels we had some cheese some grapes Mm. i mean just you know a variety of little things i let them choose you know the day before i said hey i'm going to the store what kind of stuff do you guys want to have and so they were just like all excited about it and they had that to snack on for the rest of the day. So I did one of these and, and did one of these, you know. So. She's wiping her brow and patting her shoulder for those of yes. you just listening. <laughs> She's congratulating herself, which we really need to do. Do you know that when you just celebrate a little bit, a fist pump or a pat on the back or a look in the mirror and smile at yourself like, good job, you, that you actually get an endorphin payback in your brain and your brain will rewire to help you repeat those experiences. So it actually gets easier and easier to do the things that you celebrate a little bit. That's how God wired our brains. He wants us to celebrate. That's so true. Yeah. Schedule in those little wins, guys. It's so important. Yeah, it really is. What else are you seeing in your family in terms of how you're growing in the process of this intentional scheduling or anything else, any other stories or anything you want to share with us, uh, Arlena, I just want to get more of a window into your life and your family. I think the thing that stands out to me was when we had our baby Lucy two years ago at home. Wow. She was just a blessing from God. I mean, we just, we just love her. We're so in love with her. But at that time, I didn't schedule any time for myself. I thought that if I do not start homeschooling right now at this instance, and she's two days old, that things would just all fall apart. And that was so untrue. That was not true. That was my self-talk. And, you know, looking back at that now, I think that was just, you know, just trying to beat this inferiority complex that I had about myself. You know, um, you oftentimes want to be the mom that's just the superhero. You're super mom and you can do it all, but we can't do it all. But God gives us grace to slow down. And I think that's what he's shown me these past three years that we've been homeschooling. Slow down. And it's okay. You can have a schedule, but it doesn't have to go all day long, you know, and it has to be intentional for your needs and for your family at different stages. And it's okay. Yeah. That's the thing that this world is racing by so fast. We think we have to keep up with it. But if you look real close at the world, you see a lot of lonely people. You see a lot of people who have 
lost their love for learning a long time ago and yeah. and people who just don't know what they truly believe and so this supposed slower pace is actually richer more grace-filled as you said and and here you are looking back so what would you like to say to yourself two years ago with that newborn in your arms what would you tell two years ago lena <laughs> i'd say self don't start anything right now let your kids love on this baby let your kids be kids you know you cannot capture this moment again lena just <laughs> It's going to be okay. You can learn in different ways right now. They're not going to fail. You're not going to fail. It's going to be okay. We're going to start again in maybe a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. That's what I would tell her. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of our veteran homeschool moms used to say to me and other new homeschool moms long ago, if you just stayed at home and played cards with your children all day long, they'd be better off than sticking them in, <laughs> you know, the government institutional setting. Um, they would learn so much just by being together and by being a family, you know, a family of faith with a, a life centered around God. And so, yeah, just amen to that. What final thoughts do you want to leave us with? Just anything at all, Lena, that you'd like for the listening moms and dads and maybe grandparents to think about? I would definitely just keep going back to grace. Give yourself grace. Ask for it. You know, ask God for grace. You can have our saints intercede for you. It's so important to, to pray with your kids. We do our rosary daily with each other when time allows, which is, you know, at least five or six times a week. And they learn from that. They see you. They really see you. And God is giving you the grace to keep moving forward with homeschooling. I know sometimes it's hard. I know sometimes it's you get a little weary. But he's going to give you the grace to keep moving forward. Mm, I love that so much. I can't tell you how often I pray to God. Here's my discouragement, Lord. I know you can turn anything into something beautiful. Here it is. Here's yes, my exhaustion. Amen. Here's my anxiety. Just take it, Lord. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lena, it's always so nice to talk with you. Everybody, Me thank too. you for tuning in. Uh, please pray for Lena and her family. We are all praying for you. And, and we just thank you so much, Lena, for always coming um, with such a heart for others to these conversations. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Lisa. God bless you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Looking forward to being with you next time on Homeschooling Saints. God bless. Bye-bye. And that's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com. Be sure to subscribe to Homeschooling Saints and leave us an honest review. God bless you and thank you for joining us.